Welcome back. This is a, another video in the Casual Game Mechanics Tutorials series. I'm doing the swerving mechanic in code this time around. Swerving mechanic meaning we're doing the lane hopping or infinite runner type vibe. So if you look at my awesome little level, I have a player character, which is a ball. And we have all these obstacles and they're all tagged as obstacle. I'm going to use that later. And this is just a temporary level. I'm going to replace all these assets with like a procedurally generated level. So this is just my test level. So I'm not too bothered with it. I'm just going to move the camera up a little bit more. And so let's hit the ground running. This is like the fourth time I've done this video. And I keep, for some reason, my OBS just decides not to record. So let's try this out. So if we look at our player, it has got a rigid body. And it's just using gravity and I've frozen the rotation so it doesn't roll around. So that when I replace it with a character later on, then it's going to behave the way I expect it to. Let's start hitting, let's hit the ground running. We're going to start by creating a new script, a script called Swerving Controller. Wait for it to recompile. When it does, you'll see that the bolt window pops up. I'm not quite sure what it could be. Let me actually just see preferences. They did tell me that if I'm using bolt, it needs to be recompiled after playing. I wonder if that's what's causing it. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I just wanted to double check. Uh, I'm going to drag the script and assign it to the player. And I'm going to open up the script and we're going to get going. Uh, Again, we are using physics, so we are going to leave the update. We're going to leave the start for now, and we're going to just add a fixed update, because that's where we're doing all the actual movement for the character. I'm just going to move these comments. They upset me. Okay, and just to get the, the ball rolling, if you, for lack of a better description, we're going to need a serialized field, which is going to be a float. We're going to call this forward speed I guess and I'm going to set that by default to be 5f f is short for float it's always safe to just put that there because you sometimes get errors where if you've ever typed in 0 0.5 and left it like that it gives you an error because it needs to know what's with the decimal point is it a float and you need to confirm that it's a float so let's uh, get this ball rolling and then we'll add the different stuff. So we'll just leave this as it is and get it moving and then we'll come back to the other stuff that we need. So in the start, oh wait, we need a rigid body. My, my apologies. So let's go private, rigid body. Let's just go RB. And in the start, we need to assign the rigid body a, a rigid body, if you will. Get component, rigid body. There we go. This remember this only works if the comp if the rigid body is where the script is. So that's why we're saying get component rigid body because it's it's aware that this rigid body exists or it should exist on the the the, the object that the, the game object that's got the script. So we're just doing that. So we're going to copy RB, go to the fixed update. We're going to do something called move position. I normally use velocity or add force, but lately doing a lot of kind of messing around with controllers and 2D controllers, I find that move position gives me a better result because all you're doing is actually physically moving the object. You're not adding force, you're not adding velocity, so you're not at the at the mercy of the, the, the velocity guards or the force guards. You're just physically telling the object, you were here and now you're going to be there and you're going to be there and we're just moving the object, uh, physically moving the object. What's nice about this is it still respects collisions. It still respects where the colliders are and it will not force itself through a collider. So the way this works is a lot like a transform.position. So we need to start by, uh, we're going to split the x, y, and z. So I'm going to go start with a new vector 3. And for now, it's going to be 0 in the x, 0 in the y. And we only concerned ourselves with the forward movement. And the forward movement is simple. We're going to say transform.position.z. We're going to add the speed so we're going to go forward speed and we're going to multiply that again because it's physics by fixed delta time just to be safe you can never be too safe when it comes to like uh, any kind of performance based mechanics or systems so let's see what that does that should get our character moving forward there we go 
it moves forward. If I move it back, it'll keep moving forward. I currently can't move it side to side because it'll always try to snap back to zero because that's what the code is telling it to do. There we go. And notice how it will not go through that object. So now that we, we've got that working, let's go and progress through. Let's do the Y because that's the next easy one. I want to be adding jumping at some point. So I'm going to say RB dot velocity dot y just so that i can add the velocity the y velocity back in as gravity and all that's left is this last bit in the front which we are going to update with a value that we update when we press a button we don't have this variable just yet so we need to get to that variable so we're going to go to top here i'm going to say private float because it's only an we only need the x position so we're going to call this new x position so the new x position is where we're going to be moving and i want to do this over a period of time i want to interpolate or lerp so we're going to do a math f dot lerp the starting position is where are we now transform dot position dot x where are we going the a new position and the last thing we need is a how fast it's going to get there so we need to add a serialized field so I want it accessible by, by in the editor. We're going to call this lerp speed. And I'm going to set that to 5. It's going to be a little bit slow, but it's going to be just so you can see that it works. So we're going to copy the lerp speed, and we're going to multiply that there. We're going to add that in. And then just again, to be safe, I'm going to multiply that by time dot fixed delta time. Okay, so now we've got the entire move section done. So I'm going to put a comment here. Not there. Player movement so we know we need to know that that's what's actually making the player move so we're using the lerp so we can tr transition from think of lerping if you're struggling with the concept as in almost setting keyframes you're saying he, at the beginning you're here at the end you're here and you have to try to go over take you got to travel from this location to that location over this amount of speed or this amount of time just so we get a nice smooth, because if we don't put this in, it would work, but it would the lane hopping would be very drastic. So within one frame, the character would jump from the middle lane to the left or to, from the left to the middle to the right really quickly. So we don't want that. We want to have a little more control, control over how it behaves. Okay, let's do this. So... <laughs> I need to create a new variable here. Sorry, I just it's just one of those days. And everything is a little bit weird. So this one is going to be called start x position. I'm going to need to know where the character start position. The reason I'm putting this in is in case if you're not like me and you design your levels, but you're not too bothered where the character is in the world, um, I, we're going to need to know the character start position for the next uh, section. And we're going to need two more public serialized field variables. The first one's going to be a float. And let's call this player x value. And I'm going to set that to two because that's how I want my character to move two units across every time I click on it. And the next one is going to be a serialized field. And we're going to call this a vector two. It's a vector two. And these are going to be clamp values. And we're going to set the, the default values as minus 2, comma 2. It's never 2. It's never 2. I just... So I'm setting the defaults because I don't want it to go more than 2 meters to the le player's left starting position or 2 meters to the player's starting position right. So that is what we have. So in the input here, we're going to say if... We're going to go input dot get button down what button am i looking for horizontal again if you've been doing a fair amount of tutorials over the years you will know what i mean by horizontal it is the unity's uh, action for when you press the a key the d key the right arrow key the left arrow key or your left and right on your left analog stick so if that happens if we press that button then we are going to set to this new position again i did not put an underscore how many times you do this video and you still make the same mistake sorry i'm renaming those or they're going to bug me so the new position is going to be equal to what transform hold on give me a second 
So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say new position. So the new position that we want to move to is going to be calculated based on the current position. And then we're going to add the new position, uh, the, what's it called? Player X value. I think that's what we call it. So let's do that. So we're going to say transform, transform dot position. And all we care about is the X position. And nice. What am I doing? Exposition, and we're going to go add. What are we adding? We're going to be adding, and this is where I'm going to do an input dot get access raw. I'm going to just copy this here because I'm again too lazy to type it out again. So what I, the reason I'm doing this this way is instead of saying if I press the A key add to uh, minus two, if I press the D key add two, is because this way it allows me to get that value. The get access raw will give me three integers either it's going to be zero when i'm not doing pressing it two if i'm pressing a uh, one if i'm pressing d or minus one when i'm pressing a so that's way i do it all in one line of code and get the result that i want so i'm going to do that and i'm going to multiply that by my player input value and that is now going to allow my character to move because remember we're feeding this into our loop so let's test this out it's currently a little bit broken meaning you'll see what i mean by a little bit broken so i'm going to just move the camera so you can see exactly what i mean just rotate it there let's start the game there we go notice how i'm able to kind of leave the level and you know so i want to be able to clamp it between two units to the right and two units to the left of the starting position that is why and that way if your level is pretty much wherever it is this will always work so let's start by setting the start position equal to transform dot position dot x so we're going to get the current position x position and set that as the start position then we need to go into here we're going to grab all of this code that we wrote we're going to cut it and we're going to put this inside of a clamp. Remember, a clamp requires a starting, uh, like it requires the value that's going in, and then it requires a clamp value. So we have our clamp values up here, and we have our starting position here. So we're going to grab our start position, and we're going to add our clamp values dot x for our minimum. And then I'm just going to copy that again, put it after the comma for our max value. This time I'm just going to change it to the Y because X is our minimum, Y is our maximum. And that's pretty much all we need to do to get this up and running and done as far as the movement is concerned. So I'm going to go to the left and you'll see I can spam the button. I can no longer pass the X, the outside uh, boundaries of my two units across two units across now my loop is a little bit slow so i'm going to make it something like 10. it just needs to be a smooth transition but not a slow one because this is still a lane hopper there we go and there we go it's working so all that's left to do is when it collides with one of these objects we restart the level so in the past videos i kind of just put it inside of the character control and i was it's not it's a very destructive way of coding in this case for this series so i'm going to go and create a new script here that i'm going to assign to any object where i want to do something when the level ends or when you collide with it. so on game end collision so on game end collision, just let it recompile. I'm going to select the player and I'm just going to add this to the player because that's where the collision is going to be detected. I'm going to open up the script and we're going to remove everything but type in on collision enter. And remember, we tag these. Let me go back here. close already we tag these as obstacles so that's what we're going to be looking for so we're going to say if we're going to go other dot collider wow what just happened I must have hit my touchpad again dot collider dot compare tag 
and it's going to be obstacle. So if I hit an obstacle, for the time being, I'm just going to put a comment here so you can see what you're going to uh, put. This is where you do what you want. You do what you need when the level ends. So this is where you're going to put in menus, a pop up menu, whatever it is. I wouldn't recommend just doing a restart level, especially if you're making a full complete game. The player needs to be able to like maybe go into a pause screen and get approached with the option to restart the game, go back to the main menu, whatever it is, show a little bit of a high score, a current score versus a high score, that kind of thing. But just for testing, we're going to just restart the level. So we're going to say using a Unity engine, we need to access the scene management so we can reload the scene. So here we're going to go scene manager dot load scene. And I don't want to go and type in the name of the scene. I just want to get the active scene. So I'm going to go and type in scene man scene man manager dot get active scene. And the active scene needs two round brackets. And then after that, we're going to type in dot build index. So we're getting the build index of the current active scene and we're reloading the scene. That's that's it. That is going to work. So when we hit this object, we're going to the object the the little ball is going to go, the level is going to restart, and we're going to start at the beginning of this little track. So there we go. Every time we hit it, as long as we're not hitting it, we can go through the level. If I hit it at the end, we go back to the beginning. There we go. It's working. And hopefully that's been helpful. Um, again, if anyone has a like a, an idea of how to stop Bolt from popping up every time it recompiles the script or... Uh, I would please put it in the comments. That would be really, really helpful. But that's it for this video. And the next videos are going to be on agility, timing, and dexterity mechanics. So we'll be covering that next. Thank you so much. Until next time, be safe.